The next glacial landforms I'm going to show you here are actually not the result of the pushing action of the glacier, but rather the result of meltwater. So glaciers are constantly melting. And as they melt, that meltwater trickles down through the glacier. That meltwater will carve these long tubes or tunnels uh, inside the glacier or even against the bottom of the glacier. And these ice caves, these tunnels, kind of snake along in the same direction that the glacier flows. And those tunnels will fill up with uh, meltwater along with glacial till, debris, sediments, all kinds of things that are entrained in that glacier. When the glacier melts away, these long sort of highways of meltwater related sediments are dropped on the surface. And these structures are called eskers. So I'm going to go ahead and let this glacier melt so you can see what it looks like when those eskers, which really form inside or underneath the glacier, are revealed. Okay, so now that the glacier has receded and melted away, we can see these eskers that are left behind. So one thing that might strike you right away is that eskers are sort of delicate. They're not robust or really durable looking structures. You might also notice that eskers are oriented in the same direction that the glacier was flowing. You could say that they're pointed parallel to the direction of flow. An esker might only be elevated by one or two meters above the surrounding sediments. And so they're actually kind of hard to spot, especially in landscapes that were glaciated tens of thousands of years ago. Now, the sediments that make up eskers might include sand, might include gravel or clay. But unlike till, which is a material that's churned up by the advance of the glacier, um, these sediments that make up eskers tend to be a little bit better sorted. And that's because eskers are formed by the action of flowing water rather than the pushing and shoving of glacier ice. And when we find sediments settling in water, often we find them becoming sorted. That just means that the fine sediments end up next to other fine sediments and the coarser sediments end up with other coarse sediments. You're more likely to see that the sediments in eskers are a bit better sorted than what you would find in something like a moraine. If you go onto a graphic imaging system and you find eskers, they look a bit like this. Again, you can see that they're quite delicate. They're almost this sort of feathery shape, and they're oriented in the same direction that the glacier was flowing. 